Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Recently, I've been thinking about loneliness. It is very scary, and I started to think about the loneliness in the grave. What can I do to prepare for it? What lights up the grave? Hmm. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We were just speaking about this a few days ago. When you are going to be buried, and you are going to wake up, and you're going to realize that you are dead. So many who are not preparing for that, when they wake up, they get panic attack. They don't even realize that they are dead. Old days, they are saying to us, the old ones, the wise ones, they're saying to us, you're going to wake up and you're not going to understand where you are. And then you're going to look at your clothes and you're going to see this is the shroud and it's not stitched. They say, oh, I am dead. You're going to realize. For those who are not preparing for their journey in the grave, the, journey, the grave is a journey. Because it's just a stopover. It is, a st when you are, the stopover is also part of the journey. It is not destination. Like let's say layover is part of the journey. And if you are preparing for that journey, then you know that layover is going to happen. And it depends on which kind of class you are. They may make you to wait in a very crowded, hot, uh, very uh, uncomfortable place or they may, may, may make you wait to sit in the members only lounge and they start treating you very good they say this is only a taste of what you deserve because you are our gold card member let's say and people their whole lives they are preparing for that gold card membership and when they get it they show off to everyone there is a station in that grave that the prophet and the awliyaullahs and the shaykhs they are concentrating on how to make that grave now like what Shaykh Andy is saying to open the right side of your window of your grave there are two windows now the right side which is you're going to see now a view to paradise and you're going to get the breeze and the barakat of rahmat of paradise or you're going to open up the left side of your window which is a view to jahannam and you're going to get the taste of that. Prophet is saying, you're going to wake up. For those who are running to prepare their graves, they're going to wake up and they're going to see a very familiar, very close person in front of them that they love. And this person is going to fill, be filled with so much light and love. And then you're going to say, who are you? He says, don't you know who I am? I'm your good deeds. I'm here to keep you company. Don't be scared. Whatever you need, I'm here. You're not going to be lonely. If you're not preparing for that, if you're running after your desires and your ego top speed, when religion is just going up and down like a robot, and you're not understanding now how to live your life sincerely for the sake of Allah, and you're making so many mistakes and you're not even realizing that they are mistakes because you're so proud. Then when you wake up, you're going to see a very ugly, very evil smelling, very disgusting creature in front of you, a very fearful creature in front of you. And you say, who are you? Get away from me. This one will say, you cannot. We were friends all your life when you were in the world. We were buddies. Why you want to get rid of me now? I am your bad deeds. You are keeping me very close to you. Why now you are going to get rid of me? You cannot. Now I'm going to stay with you and this is going to be a taste of what you're going to get. Ah. Loneliness. You are feeling lonely. The loneliness in your grave you're never going to be lonely in your grave. 
there's someone always to keep you company. <coughs> Decide who you want to be there to keep you company. If you're concentrating on pleasing Allah and His Prophet, if you're concentrating on running after the Ahli Zikr and the believers in the Awliya Allah, that time they will come to you, greeting you in the grave with a mahtar, with a band. Dum -du -du -dum -du -du -dum. They say the Sultan is here, everyone is there to welcome you. Yeah. Whatever that you're doing here, is what this is what you're going to get. You can never run away from that. I don't think it's what other people saying, television saying. You live your life the most dirty, the most selfish, the most disgusting creature. And then you pass and they put nice makeup on you. They pull here, they cut here, they take out all your blood. First punishment reaching to you. They put fire inside of your physical body. The body can feel everything, by the way. Huh? Everything, but you cannot react. And then people are looking, wearing nice clothes, high heels, wearing glasses and looking. Say, oh, he looks like he's sleeping. He's in a better place right now. <laughs> better place. You live and you are running away from Allah. And now you're going to be with Allah, you think. No one can escape from the consequences of their actions. That one is weak. He's doing so many wrong things. But he's asking for Allah's mercy and is running after those ones that Allah is saying, these ones have my mercy. These are the merciful ones. These are the Ahli Zikr. These are the Ahli Allah. Reach to them, respect them, hold on to them, obey them, serve them as much as you can. Your weakness then that time, it is so easy for them to help you, for the hand to help you, for the support to reach you, to reach into your graves, our graves, my grave. So easy. You understand? Why are you lonely? Hmm. Allah is with you. Are you running to be with Allah? If you're running to be with Allah and running to be with those that Allah says, be with the Salihin, you can never be lonely. Maybe once in a while, sit down. Maybe once in a while you're going to be lonely, but you're going to come out from that and you realize I'm just being like a child because I cannot even think whether I'm lonely or I'm not lonely because I'm running now to serve those ones that Allah loves. I'm running now to help the Ummat. I'm running now not to serve myself. I'm coming out from myself. This is the curse, especially of first world countries, because they put away all the uh, handicapped people, they put away all the poor people, they put, away, they put them away from you. They don't show it to you, either in buildings or in towns away from you. You don't see this. It's not like in, let's say, third world countries. You step out of your house and you see so much going on. These are reminders for you. First world countries, you don't see that. So the heart gets darker and darker because there is no way for you to wake up to understand. Even with the technology and the social media, your heart is hard. You see something over there, people being killed, children being taught, and you move on to the next video, you're laughing. You move on to this one, it's talking about food. You it keeps changing and changing. Your heart is not focused and it's not going to feel nothing. You are lonely, go out and help people. It's very difficult in these days, especially in first world countries. Go out and look at the one, like the sign that Shaykh Afeni used to have in the old Dargah. We're going to put it up here too. Hmm? I was complaining, the sign is saying, I was complaining and suffering because I have no shoes until I met a man who has no feet. If you don't have shoes and you don't see someone who has less than you, you're going to think you are the most miserable person until you meet someone that you realize not only he has no feet, but he's not complaining like you who have no shoes. And there's so many people who have less than us and they're not complaining <coughs> and they're happy with their Lord and they're serving. And that time you say, what am I? What a disgusting creature. What a spoiled 
brat am I? Then you come out, you shake yourself up from that, you give more shukur to your Lord, and you're running now to help people as much as you can. Allah, keep us in that position, inshallah. May Allah forgive me and bless you, Fatiha.